Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, welcome to the last session of the day. We're going to be talking today about technology tools for safe, safety data collection and uh, analysis, measurement, and results. Uh, my name is Stephen Barry. I'm the director of the IRE system for CCMTA, and it's my great pleasure today to introduce to you uh, John Saunders, who is the director of Department of Motor Vehicles, Virginia, Virginia Highway Safety Office. Uh, Mr. Saunders joined the Virginia Department of Motor Vehicles in May 2000. Uh, prior to that, he, his tenure there, he served in the United States Navy. Uh, during his time, uh, he attended the Southern Illinois University and earned his bachelor degree in healthcare management. Mr. Saunders also earned a master's degree in public administration from Troy State and had the distinct honor and privilege of serving the last five years of his career on the executive staff of the Nash Navy Surgeon General in Washington, D.C., prior to his retirement from Naval Service in 1999 after 31 years. Uh, during his tenure with the Virginia DMV, Mr. Saunders has held many positions. His current position in the Highway Safety Office uh, has focused on the primary goal of decreasing the number of injuries and fatalities which occur on our highways, or rather, on their highways. Uh, he also serves as vice chair of the Governor's Highway Safety Association. He's a member of several professional organizations and earns his Master's of Divinity degree from Virginia Union University School of Theology. Please help me welcome Mr. Saunders. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Good afternoon. I understand I'm the last session of the day, huh? Well, we're going <laughs> to, I know I'm standing between you and a, an outstanding afternoon or evening event, so uh, we, we've got some exciting, I think, uh, uh, things to talk about this afternoon. And I, I just want to first thank you for the opportunity to, to come before you and, and stand this afternoon uh, uh, to talk about uh, Virginia's traffic records electronic data system. But I also want to thank uh, uh, the CCMTA for for again uh, uh, selecting us and giving us the opportunity to come and, and present this program. Uh, I am John Saunders and I currently do serve as Director of Virginia's Highway Safety Office um, and have been in that position uh, uh, for several years now. And with me today, I also uh, have Mr. Scott Newby. Scott Newby is on our staff and uh, serves as the warehouse architect uh, for our TREADS system. And uh, Scott is going to be able to take us through some technical things today and talk about the system of, from a technical standpoint of, of how it works and the different processes that we have there. Uh, the traffic records electronic data system, TREADS, is an automatic traffic records electronic data system that centralizes all of Virginia's crash data and related information. Uh, what, what we did is we brought together multiple state agencies and combined those efforts to create this efficient electronic method of collecting and storing and providing access to, to important government information that we maintain. Uh, now, any Virginia, whether, whether it be a uh, safety advocate or a concerned citizen, can easily use the portal to look at comprehensive crash statistics in our uh, communities. TREADS uh, is Virginia's one-stop shop and that's what we like to call it, for, for accurate, timely, and detailed highway safety information for analysis and reporting. TREADS data is used to support Virginia's efforts to reduce crashes, injuries, and fatalities associated costs through TREADS. Virginia now has one of the most efficient and innovative information technology tools uh, in the nation to identify and address the Commonwealth's uh, fatalities and crashes and injuries that are occurring. I want to uh, now be able to to uh, this afternoon, we want to just look at and present some of the information and background on the traffic records electronic data system, again, we call it TREADS, to include a demonstration of the process and reporting capabilities of the system. Uh, and we, what we would like to do is hopefully end up with maybe 10 or 15 minutes to be able to answer any questions you may have about the system. Uh, and we're going to walk through those slides. Enough of the stilted stuff. That was over. There was a, we started out. I showed you a a video that we had running. Can Scott? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to do this. I, sure. This is a little bit off. No you many of you may have already just have seen this video. I just get fascinated every time I watch the video, and I'm not sure it has anything to do with what I'm going to talk about today, other than I, I get I get fascinated with this whole intersection, especially when you watch the pedestrians that are walking through. And in our business, again. Uh, in the business I am is about traffic safety and preventing crashes and injuries. And in Virginia, we truly have, a, uh, have had a spike in recent years, and I think nationally, in the number of pedestrian fatalities that we see. 
But when I look at certain, these cultures and how they maneuver through traffic, I'm just amazed by that whole process. With no traffic signals. Uh, it's a, I don't, the motorcycle, does he come through here? Oh, there he goes, yeah. It's just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, <laughs> not a place that I'd want to drive, not a place that I want to drive at all. <laughs> so just, just an interesting, just an interesting uh, intersection to, to kind of watch. Again, just kind of plays on the importance that we have in, in what we're doing as far as, as technology is concerned, what we're doing with infrastructure, what we're doing with signage, what we're doing with all of the, the, the uh, things that we're doing, especially uh, in the area, not only of pedestrian safety, but also in intersection safety uh, across, uh, across, not only the United States, but I think really across uh, 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 many nations uh, as we improve our, our, uh, our safety. I, my, my room overlooks Queen Street and University, Queen Street and University, and I, I, so I can overlook that intersection and just watch it, and I'm just amazed. Again, that's, that's a, it's very well done. The signage is very well, they've got good walks, so I watch the, the, the pedestrians walk through and out, so, so uh, I think you guys are, whatever you're doing, you're doing a great job in, the, in that intersection. Now, I've been here three days, and I have not seen a crash occur in that intersection, and there's a lot of intersections in the states. If I watch for three days, I'm gonna see something occur, so uh, uh, we're doing a lot of good work. Uh, Right here in Canada, for sure here in Toronto, of what I, what I can see. What we'd like to do now is just kind of walk through a few of our slides uh, that we have this afternoon. And TRES is an award-winning uh, system and uh, uh, has been recognized in the state by the state of Virginia uh, as well as nationally. Uh, it's been selected for uh, uh, the 2010 Microsoft Technical Case Study for Government Solutions. Uh, so many, many leaders in technology uh, have, have recognized uh, our TREDS electronic data system. TREDS allows for an enhanced, enhanced system of integration, reporting and analysis by automating and centralizing all of Virginia's crash data. It has been said that necessity is the mother of invention and TREDS is truly no different. Prior to the implementation of TREDS, the reporting of crashes in law enforcement was a totally manual process, which on average took an officer about 45 minutes to complete each crash report that he turned in. In Virginia, we receive about 120,000 crash reports annually. Uh, that translates into about 9,000 hours a year that our law enforcement officers spend along the very dangerous roadways uh, completing crash reports. Additionally, we maintain three separate mainframe data warehouses. Uh, and I, I'm gonna just go off track a second again. Scott has been telling me about the process that you have for your uh, uh, crash reporting also. Uh, and it's called CMA? CRC. 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 Crash yeah, crash reporting centers. I had not heard of that before, but I'm very interested in that process. And it sure seems like it's been very effective also in uh, uh, the way your crash reporting is going here. Uh, these three separate systems resulted in, in less than an optimal interagency sharing of data. Additionally, the, the data had to be entered into the system manually, resulting in a delayed data availability, and when it did come available, the data was also incomplete, inconsistent, and also inaccurate. Virginia's system for capturing commercial crash vehicle data was also less than optimal and the Federal Motor Carrier Administration, FMCSA, following an evaluation rated Virginia in what was known as red, which was not good. So this meant that we had some real challenges to overcome in the area of, of collecting that commercial vehicle data. But overcome we did. Uh, that FMCSA report was the impetus behind the development of TREAD system. Following that report in 2005, Virginia was selected as a pilot state by FMCSA to put into place processes which would result in improved commercial motor vehicle crash reporting. The pilot was very successful and the process changes which included the development of multi-agency teams and the development of a newly designed commercial vehicle crash report resulted in Virginia being the first state in the United States to achieve 100% compliance with FMCSA criteria and went from a deadly red status to a glorious green status. From this success, Virginia received funding from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for the purpose of developing a new crash reporting system. The development 
of TREADS was a true collaborative effort which called for a complete reconstruction of our system. Our first step was to hire a project manager and to bring together a project team, which Scott is a key member of that project team that we have brought together. Additionally, there was a need to reorganize the existing traffic records coordinating committee to include several additional partners. We also realized that we would need to redesign the crash report law enforcement, law enforcement, law enforcement was using for many years. For this to be accomplished, we needed to buy the buy-in of our law enforcement and the, the commitment uh, of the law enforcement officers to be willing to make a change. This was accomplished through the implementation of important information feedback sessions, which were presented throughout the state of Virginia. We also provided training to each law enforcement agency prior to them converting over to our TREAD system. After about five years of intense development for traffic records database was completed in 2009. We then phased out the 25-year-old mainframe crash reporting system and launched the traffic records electronic data system treads at that time. Let's look briefly at just a few of the unique features of treads and some of the enhancements that we have made to the system since its launch in 2009. Crash location had previously been a challenge and often lacked accuracy and timely verification of the reported locations. With TREADS, we partner with the Virginia Tech University who utilizes GIS technology to accurately identify the location of the estimated 120,000 crashes that occur on Virginia's roadways. Another unique feature is the system identifies specific medical terms that are entered into the crash report, such as seizure or other illnesses, et cetera, and exports that report to our medical review office for review and follow-up action. Our enhancements to TREADS include the maintenance and tracking of statewide motorcycle training rosters, which allows us to evaluate the effectiveness of the training as compared to motorcyclists who have not attended that training. We also import data from our emergency medical services, which allows us to analyze response times in relation to patient outcomes. Additionally, we, to help us monitor how well our behavior programs relating to alcohol are working, alcohol, breath, and blood content data is imported from crash reports in the Office of Forensic Science. DUI citation data is also stored here, which allows us to measure the success of our alcohol enforcement campaigns. TREADS also tracks DUI offenses through the management of an ignition interlock data to capture the effectiveness of these devices in preventing alcohol-impaired driving and alcohol-related crashes. What I'd like to do now is, is, is ask Scott to come forward, and what Scott is going to do for us now is just kind of provide you with some information on TREADS crash process and some of the, the unique reporting features of TREADS. Uh, Scott, if you'd like to come. Thank you, John. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Scott Newby, and I am the data warehouse architect for the TREADS project. My goal today is to provide you an overview of how we process crash information and analyze the data we collect in an effort to reduce fatalities and serious injuries on Virginia roadways. Grab my mouse real quick. To achieve the goal of reducing fatalities and serious injuries, we must track when, where, and the conditions that may have contributed to the crash. To start, this graphic illustrates how crash data flows through our system. Once data is collected by law enforcement, it is submitted over the internet into our crash workflow database. You can see that here as the data flows through. Once all the data passes our 250 plus business rules that validate the crash data, the data enters our crash data warehouse. If a crash automatically passes all the business rules, it skips directly into the crash data warehouse. To date, approximately 35% of all electronically submitted crashes skip directly from the crash, from law enforcement into the crash data warehouse, greatly reducing the costs involved of processing these crashes. Once the crashes are in the data warehouse, they are available to be reported by way of GIS reports, custom and standard reports, and alternative graphical reports. Let's start with law enforcement data collection. 
In Virginia, law enforcement officers are responsible for collecting crash data. We are in the process of converting all of our agencies to electronic submission and are making steady progress in that effort. In 2013, 77% of all crashes were reported electronically. Officers provide preliminary location data and alcohol data as part of their reporting. We've prepared a short video to demonstrate the use of Report Beam in collecting the crash data from law enforcement. Once the officer logs into the system, the officer is prompted to start a new report or select an existing report. For this demonstration, we are creating a new report. The officer is asked a series of questions relating to the crash and the nature of the crash, which help determine the report structure, including if commercial motor vehicle data will be become part of this report. The officer is asked a series of questions, and then as the report is created, you'll see in the video that the officer enters the address of the crash and then clicks into the GPS latitude field. The software uses Google Maps to help provide accurate latitude and longitude information. It takes a little bit to load, but the accuracy is well worth the wait. So we'll see here. The map comes up. This is right outside of our office in Richmond. So. The officer then imports the latitude and longitude without having to retype it into the form, which also saves and it also reduces entry errors. The officer continues to fill out the form and notice that the fields in red give the officer the visual that those are required fields and then he must provide all required information according to the software prior to submitting the report. A required part of the report is creating a crash diagram. We'll get to that in a second here. You see all the red. This is a one vehicle accident. So, using a component within the software called Smart Roads, the officer chooses the intersection and then can place as many vehicles as possible and any other relevant crash information from the scene and import that in directly into the crash form. This diagram is also submitted electronically, converted to XML, and is stored in our database for further re retrieval. So we have a one vehicle accident. We're going to add a uh, traffic light eventually here. Once it's found, you can see all the signage that we have loaded in. Again, as part of the crash diagram, the officer can include any text he might feel that he might want to put include in the, in the diagram, street signs, traffic signals, trailers, and wildlife. They can all be included as part of this diagram. Anything they find relevant. So once he's done with the diagram, he can save it to his local machine, and then we'll find it and embed it into the report. The officer continues to enter information after he embeds this diagram. You can see now it becomes part of the crash report. And he continues to enter crash information until he is through with all of the relevant information and all the required information for the report. If the officer attempts to print or submit the report without passing all the required fields, the officer will be notified of the verification errors and the report cannot be submitted. See that shortly as well. You see the verification issues. So we have quite a few fields in our official crash report. Um, some multi-select or uh, bubble fields coming up shortly that you'll see. But in general, this takes place until the officer is finished. From 45 minutes to about seven minutes on average to complete a report on a simple report, of course. That continues until it's all set. To summarize, submitting a crash electronically versus paper increases officer efficiency, decreases entry errors, improving data accuracy, increases back office efficiency, improves location accuracy, and improves reporting efficiency. We receive information from other sources, including the Forensic Science Office, which provide BAC data, 
other colleges and universities that help locate crashes, law enforcement organizations, including seatbelt usage and DUI checkpoints, and other state agencies. Our electronic data is submitted via secure web service, meaning it only allows officers with an established account to submit crash data to the DMV. Paper reports are still sent by mail, scanned, and enter the same crash workflow database. Again, a major improvement with TREZ is to collect better information from the time of the collection to reporting. This time has gone from approximately four months to have that report reportable to approximately one week using the TREZ reporting system. Back to the diagram. Now that the officer has collected and sent the data to DMV, the data enters the crash workflow database into our back office. The crash data is revalidated using a more intense set of business rules, and the data is matched to the driving record of those involved in the crash. During this process, the crash information is located by our Virginia Tech partner, where we receive a verified latitude and longitude functional class and standardized road name, which greatly helps in locating and creating maps and GIS um, products. Now we're through there, and now the crash has been validated, and now it moves into the crash data warehouse. A crash data warehouse is a multi-dimensional data store, meaning that the data has multiple attributes that can be analyzed together. To date, we have cataloged over 2.6 million crashes involving over 5.2 million people. We have over 150 dimensions in the data warehouse, and we track a crash event to the hour it happened. Those 150 dimensions are comprised of the factors that are associated with the crash event. Most obviously, the weather, the light conditions, the roadway surface type, things of that nature. Anything that is in our FR300 form is being brought into our data warehouse to be correlated together. We also analyze be behavioral factors such as alcohol, speed, driver distractions, along with demographic data such as age and gender. We measure the number of crashes, people involved in those crashes, and the number of vehicles. The crash information is now ready to be reported, and we do that with a variety of tools. One of the biggest reasons for collecting this information is to make use of it in a timely fashion. As John had mentioned previously, we ran into lots of questions where in the old system, we had multiple systems that weren't talking to each other, were out of sync with each other, and the whole impetus to TREDS was to create one centralized location for data so that when numbers were reported, they were accurate and they matched with everybody's view of what happened. To do that, the data must be accessible to the public and state and federal partners and decision makers. In general, we have used off-the-shelf shelf technology to make our data accessible, and those tools include the ability to export to common, commonly used applications, such as Excel and PDF. It greatly enhances the ability to share information readily. Our data warehouse is updated nightly and is available in a variety of methods. Standard reports, GIS reports, custom reports, and alternative graphical reports. Let's take a look at our GIS, or mapping-related products. Another powerful feature of TREDS is our GIS reports. These reports are available to the Highway Safety Office and general public. Geographic information, report, information system reports provide the location of certain types of crashes and allow the consumer to identify where crashes are happening and determine if resources could be better utilized or an intersection could be changed to improve signage, things of that nature. First, we'll take a look at a winter weather event crash in Virginia. This is a timeline report, and you'll notice that as the winter weather moves through, the crashes start to occur. This is an interesting storm because we actually had two in a row, and um, I'm not a native Virginian. I don't think either uh, John is, and I don't think they handle snow very well. No, they don't. So, <laughs> they don't. and uh, we end up with a lot of crashes, obviously, um, when we do have winter events. <coughs> Another uh, standard GIS product that we create is our 2014 fatalities. Let's see if I can bring that up here. Sure, it will. Let me get over to 
this computer, sorry. There we go. We use Esri with uh, it's another state partner called Vigen, which is our Virginia Geographic Information Network. And as you see here, these are the fatal crashes from 2014. And as we zoom in, we have a couple interesting things. I created this, um, this example myself. I only included the weather description and the light condition of this crash. But more importantly, I created the, um, also included our Google Street View link. If you click in here, you'll notice that we can get the street view of the accident scene, not of the actual scene, but of this intersection. You give an analyst, if someone were needing to look at this event a little closer, what other things that may not be included, approaches, intersections, signage, obstructions, things of that nature. Another GIS product that we've developed is a street level problem identification for our law enforcement officers to better take a look at their localities. This is in Northern Virginia, 2012 to 2013. And what we see here is interstate crashes and non-interstate crashes and fatals and serious injuries with the crosses on interstates in red and yellow with uh, serious injuries year over year. To give law enforcement a better picture of what and where these crashes are happening. So if you slide up and down, we have some other information that's generated out of treads. Better production, better information out to everybody in order to try to make a difference again in those fatalities and injuries. All right. Now we have our standard reporting tools and examples. Move over there. Our standard reporting package is accessible to the public and authenticated users. These types of reports are producing a predefined set of fields which can accept various predefined user parameters. For instance, one person may be interested in crash data from 2012, another 2013, 2014, combination of those years. Our reports handle those, the, our standard reports, if that's what they're looking for, is where they go for that information. The same pe people can use the same report, provide different parameters, and it makes the product a little more extensible. Our standard reports are available on demand, on the web, or can be scheduled and delivered via email. First, we have our fatal crashes by month and year. I'm very much Julia Childs when it comes to presentations. I, I don't cook the turkey. I would rather have it prepared right away. <laughs> so here you can see by month and year how many fatalities we've had over the years. If you were to run this report on our internet site, it'd probably take about um, 10 to 15 seconds to generate. So. The products we use allow us to aggregate this data a lot faster than just going off a of normal database. So we can talk about that in a little bit. Here's another graphical product that we've created. This is a line graph. Let me bring it over. Fatalities by month. Again, this could give the end user the ability to look at patterns or where disconnects have happened over the years and why this, is, why this seems to follow a pattern in these two years maybe correlate that with some external event that we do not track. I think one year we had an influx of service people and they all brought back motorcycles. Our motorcycle fatality shot through the roof. That's not something you can really, you can really collect besides looking at possible integrations with other departments within the DMV, motorcycle registrations, things of that nature. Might be an idea for an enhancement. So, like I said, uh, using the products we use, they can be uh, can scheduled and be delivered via email. This is a dashboard report that we have. You can see here we automate um, Google uh, chart object here, which is a gauge. And of course, it's free. Everybody's interested in saving money these days in the state, so we try to where we can. Here you see we have our year over year or year to date fatalities, speed related and then we have the projection of where we think we're going to be for 2014 versus the total from last year. And here you can see the trend against the actual. So, steadily decreasing, which is a good, good sign. So, 
Next, let's take a look at our custom reports. One of the most flexible features of TREADS is our custom reporting feature. When a standard report is not available or does not meet the request, our end users have the ability to build their own custom report, and this is just for our authenticated users, our back office, uh, federal partners, things of that nature, people of, that, of those roles. These report models use database and data warehouse structures to allow, the query, allow them to query the data directly to answer a wide variety of questions. And for the next demonstration, I'm going to pull up our report builder. Slide this over real quick. I've designed this uh, report uh, definition earlier. This is report builder from, we use Microsoft SQL Server on the back end of, for all of our products. Um, so what you can do is you can easily modify and create ad hoc reports on demand without asking someone from IT. When we were in the mainframe world, our data, our data analysts would have to often go to a mainframe person and ask them to extract certain data. And it, was, it slowed everything down because it just became a bottleneck. So now we've given them the tools to be able to go and get this data themselves without having to ask somebody for it. Well, let's put that back, run this report. This is a matrix, matrix, matrix report, and this is weather-related crashes by month and year. So I'll run this, and hopefully I'm still logged in. Take a moment just to execute here. Make sure it's not prompting me for anything. There we go. So you can see here, I also filtered this by 2013 and 2013 for snow and sleet and hail only. So they can look for individual pieces depending on what the, what the reporter, other state agency, um, law enforcement um, representative may have asked them for. You can change those reports as needed, those filter criteria as well. You can expand this out and it breaks it down. Somehow in 2012 we had a uh, June snow event. Um, I would imagine back in the years that was worse. Um, and that's quite possible we have mountainous regions and they might get snow late into the season, so um, you can see here that it was cleared up here. So now let's take a look at a, the, the users can also create a graphical report. I'll pull this up here. Now here's a snow, sleet, hail, I added rain as well to this bar chart. You can see it's very much like um, Microsoft Excel to the user. They can change lots of things exactly the same way. This is a little more different report here because in the filter, I'm gonna prompt the user for the year they wanna look at. So they can make a even more extensible product themselves without asking somebody in IT as well. So if we run this report, I'm gonna to have to put in the time. Put in. and hit view report. And there again, you can get this product directly without having to ask somebody to get it for you, which our users have found very powerful. So greater access to data, quicker answers to questions, better, more timely decisions. The last part, we've done some alternative graphic reports, mainly with Google. And I'll take a look at those. We've created motion charts, um, which provide a uh, just a different view of data. I'll have to set this up once it comes up. Just exploring lots of different ways to look at our data. Crash count over time. This is alcohol-related data. You can change the size based on fatality, what will that do? And then we will, once you put this into motion, you get the trail. It's a little more powerful with some other examples um, correlated with other data, but just another example of some of the things we've produced with TREADS, TREADS data. So this kind of gets to be a little bit of a memory problem, so it uh, need to use it wisely. Um, again, you've seen the Google Gauge chart, same thing as our uh, dashboard report. I'll skip over to our timeline chart. This is like the stock ticker you might be familiar with, with looking at a stock in Google. 
So we can isolate down to a current a year, maybe look at something interesting like this dip in 2010. Slide over. I'll try to get my mouse over there. There we go. Maybe this leads to some other questions about why this happened here. Why did we have a, a decrease in, did we just have really good weather? This is end of February, early March, and you'd think we'd be getting snow, sleet, rain, and maybe look back at our historical data. Some of one of the things that we've talked about in our group is talking about bringing in external data such as weather, um, again, motorcycle registrations, things of that nature to correlate to the crashes and see when you have an increase in moped registrations, what happens? What happens if you have an increase in motorcycle registrations or motorcycle endorsements? What happens to this data? Correlating all, that all together is really the name of the game. So to wrap up, in order to decrease fatalities and serious injuries on our roadways, we're tracking our data. We're looking a little more closely at where things have happened and trying to utilize our resources a little better in order to combat the behavior issues, things of that nature. So with that, I'm going to hand it back to John to take a look at our outcomes. Thank you. I love those IT guys. They keep me out of trouble. <laughs> I have one of those things I can't come close to. But uh, Scott and his team, they, they come up with all of these things, and they tell me what they're doing next and how they're doing it. Uh, I get excited about it when I see it. And uh, it, it's truly making a difference in what we're seeing as far as our, our ability to analyze the data. Uh, I, I, I'm a convert. When I first took this job, I don't think I really realized the importance of data. But boy, the longer I'm in the job, I find out that that's really foundational, that we have to have good data, we have to have timely data, and it truly has to be accurate data for us to use. And the only way we can be effective in using our resources is really having that, that kind of a data to make a difference, and, it, uh, and, we're, and we're seeing those. So well, in closing, we just want to run through the outcomes again that we have seen. Uh, again, I want to thank Scott for, for, for his uh, portion of the presentation and, and, and showing us that, that how that process all works and pulling together those reports. Uh, um, uh, first, we have attained an improved data quality, as I just talked about, beginning with uh, the information the law enforcement officer enters into the crash report. It's quality information. We, 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 we are not getting, when you get handwritten reports, it was just very difficult to process the, the amount of time that was taking us, uh, the, the economics of it the staffing that we had to have in place to, to ensure that that was happening. There was a lot of things involved, but now we get good quality data, uh, ending with quality data uh, being entered into treads. We also have realized improved data efficiency uh, by decreasing the time data is available for analysis uh, by more than 90%. We also have further improved our resource efficiencies by saving more than a half a million dollars annual in personnel costs that has allowed uh, and allows the law enforcement officers to complete a crash report in one third of the time previously required. And one of the key portions and, and issues behind that, that law enforcement being able to get those reports uh, uh, completed more quickly is to get them off the roadside. One of the most dangerous times, if not the most dangerous time for our officers is, is when they're along a, the, that busy roadside and the, the number of crashes that we see and uh, fatalities and injuries to our officers. So we want to get them off the, the roadside as quickly uh, as quickly as we as we can. Um, we also um, where we actually were, yep, yep. Uh, we also have further improved our resource efficiencies by saving more than half a million dollars and uh, again again uh, getting those uh, officers off the roadways. Additionally, TREADS provides for improved accuracy in the location of crashes, resulting in improved problem identification and focused enforcement and appropriate countermeasures. The focused allocation of resources, such as the law enforcement, results in behavior, behavior modifications. Drivers slow down. We see less impaired, distracted drivers. We can also identify needed signage and infrastructure improvements. Again, as we talked about earlier, it's so key for us to be able to know where to get our officers uh, from a locality standpoint. When they run those reports, they can see where crashes are happening. We also monitor and uh, 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 focus our grant dollars. We get our funding, federal funding, uh, from NHTSA uh, to, in fact, impact these, these different uh, areas of behavior. So for us to be able to utilize those dollars efficiency, uh, efficiently and, and utilize the tax dollars efficiently, it's good for us to be able to, to, to work with our, 
our uh, law enforcement agencies to show them this, these are the problems, this is where problems are occurring, this is the time of the day, day of week, when we need to have enforcement out. We're seeing increased alcohol-related fatalities, or we're seeing folks that are not wearing their seat belts appropriately. Uh, uh, we're seeing things that would lead us to believe that we're seeing distracted driving issues, whether it's running across the center road or running off the right, uh, those type of things are happening then we can focus our resources to be where they need to be to, to focus on the problems that we're, uh, we're encountering and really makes a difference in, in the number of crashes and fatalities that we're seeing on our roadways. The system is also user friendly and prevents uh, the entry of invalid data, eliminates paper and information uh, is available to treads within six hours of the receipt of that data uh, to us. The crash report which uh, was developed is 100% compliant with the Federal Motor Carrier requirements and is used by all of Virginia's law enforcement agencies. With TREADS, uh, for the first time, the public also can, can access the system through the Department of Motor Vehicles website to search for general information about, uh, uh, about our statewide crash data or specific locale, locality data if they would uh, like to have that also while allowing for the important data sharing with educational institutions, law enforcement, uh, medical services, and also other state agencies. But however, the most important thing I think that we take away from TREADS is, is the outcome is the TREADS has contributed significantly in a steady decline of the number of crashes, serious injuries, and fatalities occurring on Virginia's roadways. I think um, in 2013, we had 741 fatalities that was uh, our second lowest that we've recorded. We had 740, I think, in 2010. Uh, so we had 741 last year. Uh, so our numbers are, are, are getting better. Uh, the year that Scott referred to, I want to say it was 2007, when we had a, a number of uh, uh, 1,027 fatalities on our, our roadways, and a significant number of those, and I want to say the number was 127, were motorcycle fatalities which was a, was a spiked increase. Our numbers had been running about 65, 68 in that 70 time uh, frame. And then uh, we just had that one spike that year, but we're back under control. I think last year, our, our motorcycle fatalities were, uh, was in the 50s. So uh, the numbers are, 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 um, are, are leaning and going and declining in the manner that we would, we would hope that they would. Uh, that really completes our presentation. Uh, this is my contact information. Again, uh, if you have any questions for me or, or Scott, either one, you can surely contact us and we'd be glad to, to give that to you, uh, answer any questions you might have or any additional information you might, uh, might want. But uh, hopefully we have just a few moments available for questions. Okay. Um, so if, if you've had any questions, uh, anything you may have said that uh, you want to follow up on, we'd be glad to, to do our best to try to answer those questions at this time. Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask about, um, it seems to me there's probably insurance applications here as well. Um, I know from talking to some of the um, collision repairs, they run into a huge lag time waiting for the police reports to clarify Absolutely. deductibles and all this sort of thing. So is, is that an application that, that gets or can be used by your data as well? Absolutely. Our, our TREDS data, now we have a... Uh, an insurance verification section within our, our DMV where that information goes to. But again, our crash reports are, are, are uploaded or, and over to that system also. So yes, we're getting much quicker uh, crash report, report availability for our insurance agency. So it is uh, very adaptive for that purpose. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, two questions for you. The first one is I noticed when you were doing the uh, actual the crash report entry in it, okay. you're manually entering the driver information. I'm just wondering if you're looking at doing uh, uh, barcode scanning or anything like that. That's question one. And question two is when you're uh, actually doing the crash scene recreation, are you looking at importing uh, photo, uh, photo uploads as opposed to doing a uh, a semi-automated uh, crash reconstruction? Two really good questions. Um, the first one, we are going to start doing e-citation eventually, um, and that's when we're going to buy the equipment. I think it's more of a funding issue. Um, obviously, th that would greatly reduce the amount of time it takes for the officer to enter that information. So definitely, once we get the equipment, I think it's more of an equipment issue than it is and some other licensing issues that we'd run into with that. 
Now, could you repeat the second part? Sorry. The second part was in your when you're doing your crash reconstruction, you're doing a semi-automated process. You know, dropping, dragging, and dropping. Are you going okay. to be looking at uh, photo import? We, uh, interestingly enough, I think um, the officers do take photos, but they are not incorporated into the report. The issue mainly is a legal one, I believe. The crash report is not admissible as evidence in Virginia. It's there more for um, information and to refresh the officer's memory if it does go to trial. So um, while that would be a great feature, and it, it is possible because we do store that uh, crash um, diagram in the database as uh, a blob, um, binarily large object, um, it's just like any other image. We could store it as part of the crash as well. So it's definitely a, a great, great idea. I think we might explore that in the near future. Just a follow-up question, uh, but in a different uh, slant, I guess. It um, strikes me that where you're able to pinpoint the uh, frequency of accidents, that information, does that get passed along to public works if you've got a dangerous curve or something like that? Maybe there's not money to do anything about it, but at least you're aware of it, and it maybe gets put on a priority list to, to get addressed to reduce uh, accidents uh, at those points. Absolutely, it goes to, uh, we have several reports that are automated that go to VDOT, which is a Virginia Department of Transportation. Again, they were one of the mainframe holders, and they, back in the day when this was all done by paper, it was sent to DMV, the same paper was entered in DMV, it was entered, it was couriered over to VDOT, they entered it into their system, and obviously not very efficient, and one of the precursors, of course, to creating a centralized database system, so. So, so to the end, like, would you push data out, rather than just uh, to those uh, agencies, and work very closely with our VDOT, and, and in many states, in many states, uh, uh, our office, the Office of Highway Safety, is, is located within the Department of Transportation, VDOT. Uh, it's only very few states that's located within the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, I think only three or four throughout the, uh, throughout the country. And in some states, it's also aligned under the uh, public's, uh, uh, Department of Public Service, which, which would normally be the uh, state police. Uh, it's aligned there. So it's, it's a, 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 our office of highway safety is aligned in different agencies uh, throughout the state. In Virginia, here where we are aligned into the DMV, and our commissioner of Department of Motor Vehicles is assigned to the governor's highway safety representative, uh, and that's in code by that position. So uh, that's why I was asked to think of the DMV. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, the, um, I, I, my understanding of these accident reports historically has been for stats, you know, for the government more than insurance agencies or law enforcement for prosecution purposes. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was curious about, you know, you know what you're gonna upload photos now and it's kind of your, it's a touchy area. But I guess my main question is, you're uploading this information onto your website, these accident reports, is there not, is, do you have a cost to the person in the accident if they want a copy of that uh, report or the insurance company? Yes, both, right? Yeah. Uh, there is a cost associated. Uh, it transferred from our state police who would provide that information and charge the uh, citizen or insurance company or insurance representative for that crash. Now that's internal to DMV because we house it. So I might have forget what the cost is. Seven dollars? I think you're probably close. Yeah, uh, less than ten. It's less than ten dollars. Right, report. right. Okay, and, and, but, and that's still going to maintain that when you Right. They, they're looking at ways to automate that via way of a PIN transaction off the website. So if you want to yeah, automate that. The idea is just how you then again, we, uh, that, that branches into personal identification of information. And so that's a real kind of uh, hotbed of releasing that information. And it's no big deal to fork over seven, eight, nine dollars. You've got somebody's personal information who might be a representative in the state. There's issues like that. So we're looking at redaction techniques and things of that nature. Good and bad. Privacy and things of that nature, absolutely. You mentioned that you have about 250 rules that the data verification has to go through before it goes into the database. Mm -hmm. Do you still have uh, 
data analysts who verify the data afterwards, or is that considered final data that can be released? That is, um, we still have data analysts. What we're really trying to do is convert them from data entry people and that position from data entry only to more of an analyst where they critically think about the crash and enter it and correct it as needed. So um, that role is changing because it used to be all just manual, hand enter, reproduce. And now that we've reduced the staff from 20 some to about 10 or 12, yeah. Yeah, and with some temporary uh, assistance as well. It's, it's a growing process, um, changing that role over. There's still things that you can't um, get a feel for. What are some of the data quality issues we get? A 52-year-old male driver in a child seat is what we used to get on our paper form, right? A lot of the officers don't like to do this information. They feel like it's a little underneath their skill level, for lack of a better word, and they don't put as much effort into it as well, which then increases the burden back on the back office and creates a cost for the DMV. So with all those rules, it, it's not perfect, but it's probably about 80, 85% of the main um, bulk of what they told us were the main errors in the crash. So greatly helps to give them the visual. And I didn't show you the, the back office website, but if you get the crash form up, it'll say, it'll just pinpoint all the things where it's wrong and the analyst can go through and, and correct, contact the officer if they need to and move on with the crash report a lot faster. So. John Steve Sanders in the Reporting Centers here in Ontario and Alberta. Uh, can you tell us about some of the, the challenges you had in having the police use your program in the beginning? did this change with uh, treads, had done a, a revision of our crash report. And uh, uh, we, had, uh, we had trained our officers in that. And then uh, like two or three later, years later, uh, later, we were ready now to, to try to convince them that we've got a better idea. So that in itself causes a problem. Uh, uh, just with folks, number one, not wanting to make the change uh, and being able to get out there and, and, and to talk to them about why this would be better, why, why will it work? We had to prove to them that it would be worth them com being committed to it. Uh, and, and that was just an educational process. And we just had a team that we had to put in place and we, uh, we set up trainings across the state with all of the law enforcement uh, in all the different uh, areas to get that information across that, that, that this in fact was a better way. Even though we, we had, had added an extra page because we wanted to cover that commercial vehicle piece a little cleaner to be able to, to do it, to show them that by still by doing it, we could save them that amount of time uh, uh, to get the work done. So really, it was it was it was that convincing that we had to do to get them to buy in that yeah, we're willing to do that, and to get the chiefs of police and those people that were in those uh, those lead roles to be able to support us in doing it. Uh, that that I would say was the, was was the key piece of doing that. But but they 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 came on very well once they got it. Once we in fact uh, uh, pushed it out and. Uh, explained it to them, uh, we've got 100% buy-in. So we're very happy with that. Did you find there are limits? We, we did provide funding to those agencies that, that required uh, additional uh, equipment uh, and continued uh, to do that. And as Scott has pointed out, as we move with the e-citation, that's one of the issues also. As we, we go to this e-citation, we're, we're looking at funding that equipment also. We have really have gotten the funding approval to be able to do that. We're now just going through some other uh, legal issues that we're dealing with as far as the, main, the maintenance of, of those e-citations e on our, uh, on our uh, um, um, help me with the term. No. Yeah, where we maintain it at. On our server. Who's, who's, gonna, who's going to take ownership? Yeah. The legal ramifications around where the database resides. That's right. The database resides on our server as compared to being on a Supreme Court server and some issues like that that we're dealing with right now and, and how we can best do that legally. So that, those are some of the wickets we just have to move through. But I think we're going to get through those things and be able to move to e-citation. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. 
obviously this is a very successful um, project for you. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be in the business of selling this to the other states? We, I don't believe we'll be in the business of, <laughs> of selling it to the other states. We, again, we, we're, we're, we're open to sharing what we have done and, and how our, our, our system has been developed over, over time. And there are some other states who are doing some good things also as far as their data is concerned and storing the data and being able to, uh, to get their crash reporting out. We believe we have the one, if not the best, uh, one of the best in, in, in the nation, and we're willing to share that information as uh, uh, as we go about, so uh, not probably we we'll probably not be selling it, but but you know if we come down to best practices and, and those type of things, we're sure willing to share that information with uh, any of our our states. Yes, sir. So you're making the uh, data available to the public, right? Basically, like mm -hmm. open data. Mm -hmm. uh, was there any kind of risk that came out of that? Like, is, is uh, the public? using it for, you know, data mashup and so forth, like, have they used it in such a manner that it created risk for you guys, as far as you know, or? Uh, I, don't, I don't believe so. Uh, we've been really keen on protecting that private information. Um, anything in the data warehouse does not have a name attached to it or a driver's license record. So mm -hmm. that's basically everything that we've made available in statistical aggregate data so that it's disassociated had requests, you and Barbara Tweed, to have crash data expunged and completely removed from our databases. I think we have one since I've been here in mm -hmm. my six years. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's very few far between, and I don't know. We haven't had any any data leakage or, or privacy information. Nothing. I'm aware. Nothing I'm aware of. Nothing I'm aware of. Well, again, I, I want to, again, thank each of you again if uh, – if you have any other questions, we will surely be around a little bit after uh, this presentation, and you do have my contact information. Please feel free to use that. I appreciate you being with me as the last session uh, the afternoon, and uh, I'll, I know you're looking forward to a wonderful conference upcoming, and uh, by looking at the agenda, I think it's going to be great. Uh, we're flying out tomorrow back to the States, but I can tell you I've had a – I came in Friday. Scott came in yesterday. I've had an enjoyable stay in Toronto. What a beautiful city. My first opportunity to, uh, to be in Canada and uh, with just wonderful people. Uh, people are very friendly, very open. I'm just uh, very impressed. And uh, I just thank you for having me and having given us the opportunity to come and present to you this afternoon. Thank you again. Well, thanks again, Scott and John. Um, I, can I ask you to move your laptop? Sure. You're going to benefit from this. So. Um, on behalf of CCMTA and the conference, we'd like to uh, present you with a, a couple of speakers' gifts oh, thank you. To, as a, as a very small thank you for coming up and presenting. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, thank you John. Thank you so much. Um, just a, a little bit of an operational note for everybody in the room. Uh, at 6.30, we have a reception across the road of the Four uh, Seasons Centre for the Arts, which is the opera, opera house across the road. It's on Queen Street, but if you walk at the front of the hotel, uh, following proper road safety, cross by looking both ways. Don't walk backwards through traffic, but it's right across the road from us. And uh, we look forward to seeing all of you there. Uh, we have a little under an hour to powder our collective noses before we go over there. So I hope to see you there. And thank you very much for coming to the presentation this afternoon. Thanks, that was a great presentation. I have a million technical questions for you. We're actually... Changing over our um, with light here and the net system, okay. um, and we're building a recording like that, okay. uh, which is the first time we've done it. We've had a very manual process before. We're going, we're going full. Uh, we're going uh, full dot net. It's going to be sitting on top of SQL Server. Thank you. I'm looking at spreading in uh, recording server functions, which you've obviously sure. got into, and we're looking at some of the.